risk a strike from the rattlesnake against my hip, but if I moved, the other one would get me in the neck. I lay tensed, my body covered with sweat. All I wanted to do was stay alive. This is Sideshow, a carnival story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. Adventure, the top of the world in action drama for men, presented by Scholten, makers of Old Spice aftershave lotion, for that top of the world feeling after every shave. You know, speaking of carnivals, I'd like to sell tickets to the wild animal act that some men put on when they shave in the morning. The roar of a cage lion is nothing compared to the sound these men make about razor burn and sensitive skin. The reason is sad state of must be that they just don't know about Old Spice aftershave lotion. For you know, as well as I do, that when you use Old Spice after shave lotion, uncomfortable razor burn vanishes instantly, and your face feels cool and smooth. Old Spice lotion is healing to the skin, and it has a tingling freshness that makes you feel wide awake and ready for the day. No wonder that more men buy Old Spice than any other after shave lotion at a dollar. Try it yourself tomorrow morning, and you'll use it every time you shave. And now to Sideshow, written and directed by Robert Monroe, a carnival story of high adventure, as told by the man who lived it, Jack Braden. It took me a long time to find where Carrie's Greater Shows was playing. Billboard had no listing on them, and it was only through asking around in the trade that I finally got on the trail. I found the outfit near Branchville one night, and everything was in full swing along the midway. The wheels were doing good business, and the parlays, or tent shows, were getting the usual play. But it was the ratty look about the whole outfit that got me. The tents had holes in them, the trucks were unpainted, and the shill games were so old they creaked. The local customers didn't seem to notice it, however, because maybe they didn't have any other place to... I walked along looking for the headquarters truck, taking my time. Hey, hey, knock him down and win a prize. Hey, you ball pitchers, knock off the bottles and take your prize. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, excuse me. Just two bits, one quarter, knock them off and take home a prize. How about it, Mr. Roney, a quarter? No, thanks. Hey, so hey, hey, knock off the bottles and win your prize. Three balls for a quarter. Show the little lady how you do it, eh? Hey, hey, can you tell if me... If you don't what... want to play, stand aside, mister. Hey, knock him down. I want to find Daisy Carey. One quarter gets you three balls. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. You want Daisy? Yeah. Red truck behind the snake tent. Thanks. Should have told me you wanted Daisy. I did. Win your girl a big prize, fella. Come on in here. Win. Hey, wait a minute, you. Yeah? What do you want to see Daisy for? That's my business. Maybe it's mine, too. Gina! Thanks for the information. You stand still. Hey, Gina! It's all right. I'm not going to do it. Gina can show you. I can find it. What is it, Gus? Yuck wants to see the queen. Well? You better take him. You don't give the answers. I gotta go on in a minute. Will you take him? You know what she said about All right. Come on, you. Hey, hey, hey! Knock him down and win a prize. Three balls for a quarter. It's easy. It's you don't have to. I can find her. I got time, I guess. The fella told me that... Over this way. Sure. You with the show? Yeah, I'm with it. That's some outfit you have on. Go on, stare all you want. What are you, Salome? And she got a snake act, too? Snake act? No, she's... Then why'd uh... you ask if I was her? Well, you look like she might look. What sense does that make? I... None, I guess. Back through here. So you have a snake act? Yeah, I do. I'd like to see it. You're in this tent right here in an hour. You'll see all you want, and it'll cost you a quarter. I'll do that. It's your quarter. Gina, the Egyptian snake woman. You can read signs, uh, too. I learned at an early age. Yeah, I bet you did. You don't look Egyptian. Do I have to? No. All right, then. What are you so angry about? I'm not. All right, you're not. This is far enough. Is this where... You there, Bull? Yeah, right here. Who's this? Trouble. He wants to see Daisy. No, he does. Take care of him. I got to go on soon. Oh, wait a minute. I'll take care of him. He's fine. Yours. Look, I only want to go Are you on your way. We don't want no trouble. I don't want any trouble either. I just want to see Daisy Carey. What for? Doesn't concern you. Maybe it does. It doesn't. You got papers for her? Papers? Hey, you don't look like a yokel. No papers, huh? Sorry? No. Okay. Now, do I see her? Not that fast. Look, I don't want to do anything but see her. That's what you said. Now, tell me why. It's a personal matter. Personal? That's right. What kind of personal? 
Now, listen, I told you I want to see Miss Carey, and I'm going to. If you want to get rough about it, well, I can get a little rough, too. So are you going to show me where she is, or do I make you? You think you can? I know I can. All right, if you're going to take it that way. I am. Just knock on the door of the truck. Thanks. I'll be right outside. That's your privilege. No, no, it isn't. Uh, what do you want? I want to talk with you. Oh, wait till I turn on the light. Never find a fool thing when I want it. You're a Daisy Carey? Well, that's what they call me. <laughs> well, that's better. I'd like to see who I'm... T oh. Hello. Hi. What's on your mind? It took me a long time to find you. What do you want me for? I don't know until I talk with you. Well, go ahead, talk. May I sit down? Sure. Sit down if you can find a place. Thanks. You, Carney? What? No, you're not. Too well-dressed, too good-looking. If you mean am I in show business, no, I'm not. You said you didn't look like it. I can always tell. Miss Carey, I'm trying to find some information. Eh, it's cheap to give. And nobody calls me Miss Carey. It's Daisy. All right. Miss Carey... <laughs> Daisy, can you remember your itinerary from season to season? My what? Where you've been. Oh, sure I can. Fine. Then you can remember where you were playing three years ago. Sure. Three years ago? Yeah, yeah, I can remember that far back. Summer 1947? Sure. We were on one-weekers in the Midwest. We started in Weberville and worked up through... Up through Powell. Yeah, that's it. Through Powell. And I have the right outfit. That's a relief. You don't know how many wrong leads I followed. There might have been another Carney through Paul. No, if you came up through Weberville, then you're the one. Huh, don't even remember the place. I'm not surprised. It's not much to remember. Things look alike, even people. I suppose they do if you see too many places. So what about this town called Powell? Well, I live in Powell and... Now, wait a minute, kid. If you want your money back from the wheels, you should have thought of that before. Three years is a long time to wait before you yell. Besides, we're in another state. Nobody forces you to play the games in the first place. <laughs> Easy, Miss Carey. I don't have any complaints. And I chase any lifter I find taking rolls off the customers, so I tell I you... I said I don't have any complaints. Then why do you want to see me? I better start at the beginning. It would help. Well, I was overseas in the Army for three years, and I used to get letters from Dad about once a month. Oh, must have been a good letter writer. I suppose so. Anyway, in 1947, he stopped writing. I didn't get any July letter. Have a fight? No, he just stopped writing. Well... I wrote to him, but my letters came back. Finally, I wrote to friends and pal, and they said he disappeared the first week in July. What about your mother? It was only Dad and me. So your old man disappeared three years ago. What's that to me and my show? Well, folks said he was gone right after your carnival left town on Fourth of July weekend. Go on. I thought because he... Listen, kid, just because we run show games and wheels, we're not kidnappers and criminals. Now, you better get out now, of here minute, fast before I... Let me finish. All right. I was about to say that Dad was always fond of carnivals for some reason, so I know he came out to yours. Well, a lot of people came, probably the whole town. Yeah, I know, but Dad was just crazy enough to join up with you if he had the chance. I'd grown up, and he may have thought he could have done what he wanted the rest of his life. Three years ago. I thought if I found your outfit, you could tell me if he went away with you, where he went after that. It's a long time. I would have come quicker, but the Army wouldn't let me. Well... No one joined up with us that I remember. I have a picture of him. Here, see, maybe you'll remember the face. Let me see. Well? Looks like you. He was a grand guy. You talk like he's dead. I'm afraid he is, or he'd have written to me. You want to be sure? I guess that's it. You ever seen him? What was his name? Brandon. John Brandon. Never seen him. Oh, that's that. Thanks for the trouble. No trouble. Mind if I look around the show? <laughs> Help yourself. Your money's as good as the next one. <laughs> Maybe you should use some of it on your bill collectors. What do you mean? Uh, your friends on the lot must have thought I was a process server the way they looked me over. Yeah, they're that way. Well, see you again. Maybe sometime. Oh. 
That got him? Yeah, out cold. All right, what do we do with him? Get him off the lot. Sheriff will find him in the morning. We'd be gone, huh? Yeah, that'll... Hey, wait a minute, somebody's coming. Uh, roll him under the tent. Sure. I'd been hit on the head with a sap and hit hard, but I wasn't completely out. It was like being paralyzed. Then hands were pushing and rolling me, and wood cracked and splintered under me. It was quiet except for the crowd somewhere in the distance. I couldn't move, and I lay there listening, and out of the near quiet came another sound. It was a strange noise, and I'd heard it before, but I couldn't remember where. It was close by, close enough for me to touch if I could move my hand. And the white before my eyes started a dull and slid into blackness, and I began to see tiny rays of light in the dark. I was beginning to see again. The light rays came from holes in the canvas wall opposite me. I looked down toward my hands and I saw what was making the noise. In the patch of light was a rope-like shape neatly coiled with one end flattened and raised over the coil. Rattlesnake. I could see another next to my hip. I could feel something moving in my hair. I tried to move and found my arms were working again, but moving now was no good. The rattles would strike if I tried to get away. I was caught. I could risk a bite on my arm or leg, but if the one in my hair got me in the neck, I wouldn't have a chance. Just lie quiet and wait. That was all I could do. Wait until someone came in the tent and saw what had happened. I could feel the sweat coming out of my body and wondered if rattlesnakes ever slept. One arm was cramped under me and I began to feel the pain in it. I was going to have to move it. Then there was a light in my face and someone behind the light. What are you doing in here? Watch. Snakes. Oh, look what you've done. Snakes. Lie still. I'll take care of them. Oh, look at their cage. You broke it all to pieces. Get them away. I am. I am. Gotta have something to put them in. Hurry. The trunk will do. There's one, two. You're picking them up with your hands. Why not? They're rattlesnakes. What'd you think they were? You better be careful. This one off your head. Watch it. He's mad. Four. Get up now. That's all of them. You're a brave kid. Am I? I couldn't handle rattlesnakes that easy. Don't do it every day. Oh. Oh, sure. Gina, the snake woman. Besides, all these... Had their poison sacks removed. If they bite, it's like being stuck with a needle. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you knew. Now, you tell me what you were doing in here and why you broke my snake cage. I didn't want to be here. Serves you right if you were scared. I was. Well? Come on, let's get out of here. I'll buy you some cotton candy. I'll go, but not for that reason. Funny feeling, all those snakes around me. Hundreds of people outside, and I couldn't call for help. Why not? Somebody hit me one over the head and rolled me in the tent. Here, feel the bump if you don't believe me. I believe you. That's how your snake cage got broken. Oh, you see the queen? Yeah. yeah. I saw her. You get what you wanted? No. Sometimes you never do. Well, I had to try anyway. Been here before? Only a dime, that's all. No. Only a dime, you two. Let's go in there. Crazy house? Come on. Yes, sir. I got enough thrills in the dark. Don't cost you anything. All right, what do you want? Come on. Going on all the time. Just put down your dime and walk right Okay, Bull? Sure, go on, Gene. Thanks. I thought your name was Gina. You think I'd really have a name like Gina? I guess not, come to think of it. I like Gene better. I'm Jack Brayden. Yeah. I'd still like to know why I got hit in the head. You roll in your pocket? The money? Yeah, it's here. Huh. Hey, it's dark. Yeah. The floor's moving. Walk to one side and you'll miss it. Huh? Oh, yeah, I see. You there, Jack? Yeah, but I don't see why you wanted me to come into a place like... Gene, I never... Wa why did... Gene! Wait! Crazy thing! Gene! Hey, what's going on in there? You see Jean? Sure, I seen her. She come running out like the place was falling apart. Where'd she go? Back to her tent. Listen, Yank, leave that kid alone. Sure. Hey, you, come back here. Come on back. Hey. Dangerous search for a forgotten man and romance in the dark against a background of mystery. Danger, romance, mystery. They are no strangers here, for these are the keynotes of High Adventure. Now that a touch of romance has been added to our story, 
Here's a chance to remind you that there's nothing like romance to add spice to a man's life. I mean Old Spice after shave lotion, of course. For when romance comes into the picture, every man wants to be extra sure of his good grooming. But we all know that there's never a time in a man's life when careful attention to good grooming won't pay off in business or in social life. That's why it's so important to make a habit of using Old Spice after shave lotion every time you shave. Once you've tried Old Spice lotion, its clean masculine scent and bracing freshness will become a part of your daily grooming you'll never want to miss. And Old Spice after shave lotion gives you wonderful value for your money. There are two generous sizes of this quality lotion, a dollar and a dollar seventy-five. Look for the handsome red Old Spice cartons at drug and department stores everywhere. And remember, men who appreciate real quality, men who know the value of good grooming say, for that top-of-the-world feeling, I use Old Spice lotion after every shave. And now, back to Sideshow, a carnival high adventure story of a man whose search for the past brought terror into the present, as told by the man who lived it, Jack Braden. I pushed through the crowd along the midway looking for the girl, Jean. I could still feel the force of the kiss she pressed on my lip in the dark of the crazy house, and I had to know the answer behind it, if there was an answer. When I got to the tent where she worked, another act was being given, and they told me she'd be back in an hour, so I went out in the crowd looking for her and to kill the hour. As I walked along, one show looked the same as the next. The common eight-man show was no different. Even the lion roar was there. Step up and see the one and only monkey man of Borneo, ladies and gentlemen. The man whose mysterious body processes have divided the greatest of our scientists. His skin is green, yes, green, friends. An actual orange fur. Yes, that's right, lady, I said fur. It grows on his chest. Now, you don't have to believe me, ladies and gentlemen. Just step right up, put down your quarter, and see for yourself. And if the famous monkey man is not all I've told you he is, then he can come right back down here. I paid the quarter on one end because I had time before I could see Jean again. As I went in the tent, I glanced behind the flap in the tent where the roaring came from. As I expected, a man was sitting on a stool pulling a cord attached to a hide-covered keg. It was a good roar, and it stopped when the people came, so they never wondered about the come on. The ape man came in the roped-off area and was green-skinned as advertised. He had orange hair on his chest, only the hair and the skin dye was wearing thin in spots. He grunted and yelled at the crowd, made faces, and tugged at the belt holding up his shorts. The belt. The buckle. The light wasn't good, and I couldn't be sure. But I had to be sure I could never leave and go home. Before the show was over, I slipped out and went back behind the tent and waited for the monkey man to come out. Then the tent flap moved, and he was in front of me. I want to talk to you. Yeah. What a nice act. What a, what a drink. Notice that belt you're wearing. Belt? Yeah, it's a nice one. <laughs> Good belt. More over in the light, I want to see it. Yeah, the lights hurt my eyes. That's better. Get a, get a drink. Yeah. Want me to bite myself. Well, I won't do it. Where'd you get this? I won't bite and throw up. Blood. Where'd you get this belt? Uh, belt? The belt. A drink. Look, mister, I gotta know. Drink. I'll get you a drink. Got, got it hit. Right over here. Where? Right over here. <laughs> You see? You see? <laughs> Better? Yeah, fine. Won't by myself make it a good show, they want. What about the belt? Where'd you get it? Good belt. Nice buckle. Silver. Yeah, I know. Did you buy it? Buy it? Yeah. Don't want it to buy anything. Just get my drink. Steal it from somebody? Huh? Did you steal it? Steal. Never steal. Another drink, yeah. Uh, no more. Look, mister, can't you tell me anything about the belt? Belt? What belt? The one you're wearing. Oh, belt, sure, sure, belt. Where'd it come from? I don't know. You haven't any idea? I, idea? No, oh, the belt was in the pants when I put him on. What's that? Oh, nothing about no belt. Put on the pants, the belt was in him, that's all. The belt was in him. Where'd the pants come from? Where did the pants come from? I don't know, I don't know. They give me them to wear. Who gave them to you? Uh, Bull, yeah, Bull did. And the belt came with the pants? Yeah, it sure come with the pants. I'll give it to you, all yours. It's all yours. Take the belt. Thanks, mister. 
Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, for it, old pal. What's it, old pal? Just hold your pants up. Mucky man don't need pants in the jungle. Fight and bite yourself. That's all. Fight and bite. All right, bud, that's far enough. Oh, you. I follow you from back of the gook tent. So? What's the pitch? Nothing. Trying to promote my gook away from me? No, of course not. What was you talking to him about? You boys around here are too curious. Yeah, maybe it's you, bud. I'm curious, all right. What do you got there? Something that belongs to me. Yeah? That's a gook's belt. It was. What'd you do, give him a drink for it? He gave it to me. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. Hey, where you going? You have to know? Yeah, I work here. I'm going to talk with Daisy Carey. Did you see the queen yet? Yeah, but I'm going to see her again. That's her truck over there. I know. Hey, Gus! Yeah? Something wrong? Nah, this oh, young Oh, you again. Sorry, I was in a hurry, I know but... why. You leave that kid alone. <laughs> you better make her leave me alone. You heard me. What are you doing over on this side, Gus? Well, I followed this young from the gook tent. What? Yeah, I figured he was trying to promote... You talk with the gook? Didn't know he'd been walking away with the belt, and then I figured... Belt? What belt? This one, Bo. I see. Unusual one. Especially the buckle. Stealing a poor gook's belt, It was huh? never his to wear. No? He got it with, from you with the pants, didn't he? What about it? A lot about it. Now, you tell me where you got it. What's the idea? Where'd you get it? From the prop trunk. Where else? How'd it get there? Look, you hand me that belt, get off the lot. It's before... my belt, mister, and I'm going to keep it. If my father left it, it's mine. I thought you'd get on it if you poked around. All right, Gus. Sure, Bo. Hey, no, you... Hey, 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 you taught me that one. Now you, Gus. Hey, Rube! Huh? Hey, Rube! What? Hey, Rube! What? Oh, Gene. They after you? Yeah. What'd you do, break up a game? No, listen, I've got to get to Daisy Carey. Go see her. Sure, with every guy on the lot looking for me. Well? They'll be watching a truck. They know you're trying to get there. I got to see her. I thought you did. This time it's different. Oh. Do you answer that riot call? I'm Carney. That means you do. I didn't say so. I'll come back later to ask you something else. What? I haven't got time. Ask me now. I got to pay you back. I owe you this. <laughs> Go out the back of the tent. I'll call him out front and you'll get away. I'll be back. I know you will. Hey, Ruth! Hey, Ruth! Don't touch that door, Yank. I thought you'd show here. All right, let's have it out. Nothing to have out, kid. You try to rob the queen of the night's take... So you got shot. I see. That's all there is to it. Easier to do the second time, isn't it? Yeah. You knock off the father, now the son. I knew you was his kid the first time I seen you. Why'd you kill him? Now get back. I'm not taking any chances with you this time. Think you need a gun? It's handy. I still want to know why'd you kill my father. He killed himself. You'd never make that stick. I knew you'd make trouble as soon as you showed. You made a mistake keeping this belt. I don't make any mistakes. You just did. <laughs> you ought to watch I... that belt. You're breaking my arm. I'm going to break a lot more than that. Take... Take care of you. Go on. You got me by 20 pounds. Stop. Stop breaking it. Drop the gun. Okay. Okay. Now I'll show you how to really work over a guy like to kill, huh? Well, how about... Stop it. Stop it. New kid. Come in here. Let go of him. Oh, no. I worked a crack shot act once. I can place all six shots back of your ear. Now break it up and come in here. All right. Boo. Blow up the mob. Don't want to ruin the rest of the night for business. Well, how about the young? I can take care of him. Get going. Yeah, all right. Don't bother with this Jack anymore. Let him walk off. Come on up in the truck, kid. Sit down. Thanks. For three years, I haven't been out of this truck, but I know what goes on my lot. You said you hadn't seen my father. I know. Why did Bull kill him? He didn't. Oh, yes, he did. I found this belt and it was Dad's. I remember it. Police will take care of him. No, Jack. Why'd he do it? Dad didn't have much money. I told you, Bull didn't do it. Sure he did. No, kid. I killed him. What? When you showed, I even thought about killing you, too. But then I heard about what happened in the fun house. Jean. Yeah, she told me. She's been waiting for a guy like you. I don't get it. 
I thought I still hated hard enough to get his son, too. But I guess it's finally all burned out. Yeah. I guess it has. You killed Dad, a stranger who never... He been... wasn't no stranger to me. He was carny, just like the rest of us. You knew that. No. He used to talk about shows and he liked them. Yeah, he was carny. Him and me. He'd shoot cigarettes out of my mouth. Never missed. Only once. See this scar on my arm? Dad never had a gun in the house. No, he wouldn't. He was strong. When that girl wanted him to quit and settle down, he married her and walked out. Just like that. Walked out on me, too. I could have killed him. You knew my mother, too? Yeah, I knew her. She died of pneumonia when I was a baby. If you could have been my kid if John had listened to me, I would have married him. Did you kill him? Yeah. He walked out on me. But I waited. I knew someday he'd come to the show, so I waited. I never forgot him walking out on me. And look what it got you. What? Look what it got you. Nothing. You haven't a thing but a pile of ashes in your mind. Goodbye, Daisy. You going somewhere? What? Yeah. Oh. Oh? Now I know. You want to tell me? No. All right. But I want to ask you something. Go on. Why did you kiss me back there in the dark? I wanted to. Isn't that a good reason? Yeah, that's good enough. I have to do one more act tonight. You're not Carney anymore. You don't have to live or die with the show. I guess not. Other kinds of people stick together, too. Do they? You need a reason? Yes, Jack. Because they want to. That's good enough. Come on, I'll show you. Where? To the big top. Not a sideshow. On a farm near Powell. You'll like it, Gene. Dad was carny once and he loved it. It's got big trees for ten poles, the whole sky with stars in it for its spread and top lights, and the whole world is your midway. <laughs> Sideshow, a story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. And next week, High Adventure is proud to present The Hungry Peacock, a strange story of a man and a woman who tried to take a million dollars from a friend, but said friend wanted their lives in exchange. And starring will be two famous personalities of stage and screen, Basil Rathbun and Anna Lee. So until next week, when you can again hear High Adventure as part of the new Hour and a Half Mystery and Adventure on NBC at this time, this is George Hogan saying, wherever you are, those around you live it, and perhaps you yourself will someday meet it. We call it High Adventure. Now, here's special news. Introducing new Shulton Shampoo in the unbreakable plastic bottle. New Shulton Shampoo has an up-to-the-minute formula which leaves hair wonderfully clean, dandruff-free, easy to manage. And ladies, new Shulton Shampoo actually gives your hair beautiful additional luster. And here's a real shampoo first. Shulton Shampoo leaves hair pleasantly scented with Old Spice. New Shulton Shampoo in the unbreakable bottle bears the good housekeeping guarantee seal at drug department and cosmetic stores everywhere. Stay tuned for the third big mystery, The Big Guy, on NBC.